Greetings my chess friends and I welcome you to this chess video. And we shall look at another game of Robert James Fisher. And this game was played in 1956. 57th US Open, Oklahoma City, United States of America. Fisher must have been very young when he played this game. And he begins with the move knight to f3. And he states in my six three memorable games that this used to be his favourite move. And he scored very nice victories with this against some very good grandmasters, notably Master Sherwin. His opponent replied knight to f6, and Fisher goes into this setup here with g3, d5, bishop g2, bishop f5, and he castles. And this is probably where Fisher diverges from Morphy. Fisher liked the Fianchetto bishop, whereas I think there is only one recorded game of Morphy ever having played his bishop. So while Fisher was certainly a classical player, he diverges from classical chess in his use of the Fianchetto bishop. Anyhow, he plays after e6, d3, and he's of course preparing either a break in the centre with e4 or c4. His opponent plays somewhat passively with c6, although it must be stated that it is a good idea to build a pawn phalanx against a fianchetto bishop. But you will see in this game how Fisher goes about destroying this pawn phalanx. And it's very instructive. He plays knight b to d2, and this is known as the Petrosian variation of the Kins Indian attack. His opponent plays knight to a6, and Fisher plays a prophylactic move a3, simply stopping this knight coming in to hassle the base of his operations here on c2, if it ever reached, of course, b4. Instead, the knight goes to c5, and Fisher immediately goes about attacking this phalanx of pawns with the move c4. This is uh, an interesting point after b5. When you have two pawns like this attacking a single pawn, it's usually a good idea simply to keep the tension because black has nothing to benefit by taking on c4. He simply doubles his own pawns and he will get static pawn weaknesses if he ever decides to take on c4. So white simply keeps the tension and this is what Fisher does and he plays the move knight to d4. And you can see it is putting pressure on the base of this pawn phalanx here. But it is a much more subtle idea than that. If Fisher can exchange off this bishop Black will be forced to recapture with this pawn on e6, further weakening this pawn phalanx. And that is in fact what transpires and it's very, very instructive. Queen comes to d7. Defending this uh, pawn here on c6, but the Queen is a very poor defender. And you'll see this demonstrated in this game, in fact. So Fisher takes on f5. Black is forced to recapture with the pawn. And you can see how this phalanx has been weakened. There's no longer 
a defender of it on E6. Very instructive indeed. Knight to B3. Now why knight to B3? Well this knight here is a potential defender of the light squares. And Fisher wants to swap it off. But he doesn't do it immediately. He develops his pieces. Bishop to e3. Knight drops back to e6. And Fisher pursues it with knight to d4. g6 was played. And queen to b3, putting further pressure on this pawn phalanx. Rook b8 was played. And here Fisher spots a tactical solution. You can see that his knight is putting pressure on the c6 point. His bishop is putting pressure on the d5 point. And this allows him to take knight takes c6 exclaim because after the queen is forced to retake he has this simple pawn fork not only regaining his material but this pawn phalanx is absolutely dissolved it's completely destroyed now and it's very instructive to note how Fisher went about doing this. Knight c5. Fisher simply plays queen to c3. And it looks as though White is in trouble, but Fisher plays bishop takes c5. Queen takes c5, and this is a death toll for, for, for black. Queen takes f6. And not only is the rook attacked, the rook here is coming to the c file. White well, has a pass pawn. And it's simply a very, very difficult position for black to play. And black, in fact, resigned. So, if we can just go back. I thought it was very instructive the way Fisher went about destroying this pawn phalanx here. C4. Then exchanging off this bishop, which further weakened it by taking away the e6 pawn. And then... Swapping off the pieces which could defend the phalanx. And found a tactical solution after knight takes c6. And the phalanx is absolutely, completely dissolved. So a very, very interesting game from Bobby Fisher. And I hope, dear chess friends, that you learned something from it. If your opponent builds a pawn phalanx so as to oppose your bishop, then we are under duress to do everything we can to destroy that particular pawn phalanx. And Fisher demonstrated this in a very beautiful and brilliant way. And I hope you enjoyed it. So, once again, I thank you very much for watching this chess video. And I wish you well with your own chess.